the multinomial logit model. First question is, do you need this model? Well, this model is typically taught at the graduate level, so if you're an undergrad, then this may not be uh, applicable to you, or you might not have to go as far as looking at this model. If you've collected data from a survey, this model could well be useful. If you've come across the logit model, the binomial logit model, then this is pretty much similar. Recall that in the binomial logit or just a logit model, that your response variable has one of two outcomes. Okay, where those outcomes, there's no natural ordering, so they're nominal. Uh, one silly example I did of this, a uh, video I did of this was uh, um, date. And does a person get to date another person? Yes or no? So that's what I mean. Um, so multinomial logit is an extension to the binomial logit because now your response variable has more than two outcomes. I'm going to focus here on interpreting the coefficients because remember at the end of the day we are interested in either using the model for prediction or interpreting the coefficients to link uh, the explanatory variables to see what the explanatory variables have to say about the dependent variable, the response. And we're going to focus on uh, interpreting the coefficients. So I'm not interested in uh, coming up with a strategy to build a suitable model for the data. Okay, so what does the data look like? Here's an example taken from the SPSS example files, so you can follow it. So pretend I'm a marketing company. I have three products, cereal product, a breakfast bar, and an oatmeal thing. And I want to kind of see what factors influence people's choices of which kind of bars they go for. So my response variable is here, be fast, and you've got cereal, breakfast bar, oatmeal. So here we've got three choices. So we're supposing that an individual can pick one of the three, but not more than one. All right. Um, okay. And then we've got some explanatory variables. Notice that they are all qualitative or categorical. They are not continuous. Um, so my interpretation of the coefficients in this case will be for qualitative um, explanatory variables. Okay, let's just show that it's been coded. Look at this value label. So if I press this, it should show us the codes used like that. Toggle back. All right. So I'm going to kind of look at the how um, gender, see where the gender, um, look at the interpretation of the coefficient on gender on the breakfast bar. So I'm going to ask the question, does your gender influence your choice of um, the uh, kind of breakfast bar, bre sorry, breakfast choice you go for. Okay, so how do we do it? Okay, we know we can't fit a standard regression model because my response variable is not continuous, we just said. Uh, nor can I fit in a normal logit model because it has more than two outcomes, it's got three outcomes. Okay. Uh, because that's an important point, let's just say this first person chooses cereal over bre uh, when they've given a choice of cereal, breakfast, and oatmeal. The second person here, uh, who is um, aged in this group 46 to 60, and it's a male person who's married and not active, um, goes for the breakfast bar. Okay, breakfast bar, just breakfast bar. And one more, let's do one more, um, fifth one. Oh, okay. Um, just happens to be also in the 46 to 60 group, also male, married, inactive as well. Goes for the oatmeal. Okay, right. And notice, as I said there, no t uh, each person only goes for one choice. Can't pick more than one. It can't be kind of... Uh, can't be kind of greedy and go for more than one. So we'll ask each person what is your preferred, what in the questionnaire it would be like, what is, would be your preferred um, choice? Oatmeal, breakfast bar, or cereal? Pick one only. That's what it'd say something like that on the survey. Okay, 
So we have to fit a multinomial. As the name suggests, multi means many, many. Uh, nomial like nominal. Um, so these like nominal outcomes, they're not ordered. We can't say cereal is be better than breakfast. We can't say oatmeal is better than the cereal, so on. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, so let's do it without any bells and whistles. We'll just go analyze regression and then we look for multinomial logistic. Click. A window pops up and I'll just reset it because I ran this through earlier. So we'll face with something like this. A dependent box, that is my choice, my response variable. So that's going to be the label B fast for breakfast. So we'll take that over there. Now the factors here are any kind of qualitative things, whereas covariates are the kind of continuous things. All right, continuous X's, these are categorical X's. Uh, we're just going to have gender. All right, um, that's it. And we're not looking at anything else. We'll just press OK. Um, as usual with SPSS, you get a whole load of stuff dumped. We're interested solely on the parameters. So let's, where is it? The bottom. There you go. Let's look at it. Notice the box consists of, within it of two subtables. What goes down here is the choice. Now notice that one choice is missing. Remember we had cereal, breakfast, bar, and oatmeal. Cereal has been left out. Why? Well, the idea is that we're going to compare all these other choices relative to cereal. Uh, so if you think about dummy variables, when you did dummy variables, um, Remember that if you have k group categories, something k categories, you set up k minus one dummies. So here we've got a choice of three. We set up two dummies, something like that. And likewise for the explanatory variable. So we'll look at each of these boxes. Each of these boxes will be comparing that choice to the thing left out, cereal. So this here box will be saying comparing people's choice of breakfast bar relative to cereal. And this one will be oatmeal relative to cereal. Okay, let's just take the first one for now. What we see inside here is we've got gender zero, gender one. Uh, so let's go back to the. We need to know what is what here. So we click on this tab, right? So we can see that male is zero, right, and female is one. That's how it's coded. Go back to the output male, male, better to write this down otherwise I'm going to start forgetting, right, so male is zero, right, male is zero, okay, male is zero, okay, now, because gender has two categories, so k is two, we leave out one as the reference category, so that's why you see that here, See, at gender equals zero, that has a number, that's a coefficient. But gender one, that is set to zero, and then you've got a, s a superscript B, which tells you that this parameter is set to zero because it's redundant. In other words, it's um, basically it's set the gender one, which is female here, to uh, set it as the reference category. All right. So gender, just to recap, gender is a categorical variable. It has two categories. Because of that. We, s we set up just one dummy variable because of the rule, uh, dummy rule. Um, if you have uh, k categories, you set up k minus one dummies. So this coefficient tells us then we'll compare males to females um, and tell us something about how likely a male is compared to female to go for this option, the breakfast bar relative to serial. The interpretation is a bit like the binomial logit, so let's just recap that here. So if this coefficient on gender is, uh, we need to consider three cases, bigger than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. If it is bigger than zero, it would mean that males compared to females are more likely to go for the breakfast bar rather than cereal. 
if it is equal to zero, then males and females are equally likely to go for the breakfast bar relative to the cereal. And if it was less than zero, then males uh, compared to females are less likely to go for the breakfast bar relative to cereal. Okay, and instead of looking at a b, we can look at the exponential of the b, which gives us the odds ratio. All right, I think it's a good idea to write this down. Let me try and write this down. Let me lay it out. Okay, so we've got here, what am I saying? We've got the uh, gender coefficient. Let's call it, let's just call it B, so I don't have to write that again and again. And then we've got the odds ratio, which is given, it's uh, this categorical variable here, as E to the coefficient value B. All right. And we've said there are three cases, so uh, result, let's say conclusion. Conclusion. Right, it can be bigger than zero, it can be equal to zero, it can be less than zero. But if it's bigger than zero, if you take e to the a number bigger than zero, that's going to be bigger than one. If b is zero, e to the zero is one. You can try this on your calculator. That's just. And if b is less than zero, if you put that into here, e to the negative number is going to be less than one, but positive. Um, okay. The conclusion here then is to say that males compared to females are more likely to go for the breakfast bar um, and cereal. cereal. Uh, likewise here, males uh, fem uh, females are equally likely to go for the breakfast bar, blah, blah, blah. Same as go for breakfast bar and cereal. And here it's going to be males uh, compared to females less likely to go for the breakfast bar and the cereal. Okay. Right, so let's see what we've got here in this output. What we have got here is got, got, we've got coefficient of negative. All right, so let's first of all get the direction right. So negative, that tells us, if we go back here, the coefficient is negative, it tells us then males compared to females are less likely to go for the breakfast bar and the cereal. Simple as that. Okay. How about if you wanted to say something more precise? Well, in that case, you can report the odds ratio. Um, 0.864. Okay, um, that tells us, let's write this odds ratio, or 0.864. Odds ratio, that's going to be odds for the male group divided by odds for the female group is equal to 0.864. Okay. Now, if this figure, going back to this here, is equal to 1, you can see that odds for male is the same as odds for females, going for the breakfast bar compared to the cereal. Since this is less than 1, if you just do multiply both sides, take this guy, multiply both sides by odds of female, we're going to get odds male equals 0.864 odds female. Okay. And this tells us that the odds for males is 14, about approximately 14% lower than the odds for females to take um, breakfast bar and cereal. Okay, that last point there you might just want to kind of think why that is, but this may not be important to you, precise nature, as long as you get the direction right, which is which is more likely to happen. I uh, just want to point out the interpretation here is for uh, my explanatory variable, 
which is categorical. Okay, so let's just pause a bit so that let that sink in before we move on.